The King of the Monsters has arrived, and I want to talk a little bit about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to another installment. It's been a while since I've done an in-camera movie review, but you know what? I just had to do it for my favorite monster of all time. Godzilla, King of the Monsters is finally out, and oh boy, was it an experience. Very rarely do I just uh, get chills up and down my spine and just geek out. Uh, for however long that movie was. I think it was more than uh, two hours. I think, I, I want to say two and a half hours, something like that. It was superb. If you like big monster movies, you're just going to have a flat out fun time. Yeah, there's criticism here and there. No movie's perfect. I get it. I, I really do not care about that stuff. I just want to talk about how great, how much fun and how epic it all was. I had a blast watching this movie. Of course, it follows the uh, MonsterVerse from uh, this um, cinematic universe that recently formed back in 2014 with the original uh, American Godzilla movie uh, directed by Gareth Edwards. I was a fan of that one. I still defend it, and I still love it. I know a lot of people didn't like it because you know, it didn't feature a lot of uh, Godzilla action, but I uh, made the comparison to a Jaws movie. I liked that approach. It was pretty unique. I enjoyed not seeing uh, my favorite monster for uh, half the movie. I don't know, it's weird, but with this, you already have that setup, so you can just go all in and have a wonderful time showing fantastic uh, CGI creatures destroying the crap out of each other and the cities around them. Uh, just the spectacle of it all. Of course, after the 2014 movie, uh, we had Kong Skull Island, and now this movie, the sequel to Godzilla, setting up the eventual uh, Godzilla vs. Kong uh, uh, event sequel movie that's coming out in 2020. But before we can get there, we have to talk about King of the Monsters, and boy, did this movie deliver. If you were one of those people that were upset with the 2014 movie, I think you're going to enjoy this. It's non-stop action, non-stop fun. Yeah, the human characters suffer a bit, but at the same time, it comes with the territory that characters behave the way they do in these uh, epic monster clashing uh, sort of movies, uh, these kaiju flicks, I, I get it. I don't, I don't mind it as much. In the first movie, I did appreciate the fact that you took the time to set up a story with a, a specific set of characters and how they dealt with the uh, incoming disaster of the Muto and then Godzilla showing up and all that stuff. With this, uh, yeah, it's almost a complete set of new characters. We get the returning Monarch uh, business company, whatever, and there are some familiar faces. But for the most part, everything's brand spanking new, except for the cameos here and there. Uh, the movie is intersected between character interactions and monster fights, and I dug that. I didn't mind... Um, going in and out of both stories and, and you know, seeing how uh, Monarch was evolving as in uh, a corporation, if you will, in the face of this epic event that happened in 2014. Now it's in the public spotlight and the government is involved and all that stuff, so I really liked it. Uh, the, the characters make some really stupid choices. It comes with the territory. They have some really stupid dialogue and... Like, there's even a scene where um, they're literally uh, doing, like, an exposition dump on the audience. But I think people that don't know about other monsters except Godzilla, they will want to see that and get informed of these monsters. I really did not mind because I love scenes like that where characters just flat out 
uh, read uh, entries on characters and explain who this monster is and their origins and all that stuff. I really like that. I, I find it fun and part of the uh, uh, spectacle of these sorts of movies. You know what I mean? Uh, when it comes to the action, it is a th it is a thrill. Like this is why we go and have fun at the movies. It's summer big action flick, the, the Dolby Atmos uh, thing at the theater and, and the DTX and all that stuff, it sounds really, really impressive with all those speakers and Godzilla roaring just sends a chill up and down my spine to the point where I was uh, teary-eyed and crying out of excitement of what I was watching. I was so happy, I was so giddy. I was just, like, even if the bad guys were winning, I was still psyched because Man, I wish I could go back in time and tell uh, my younger self that this was coming out or, or to let him see it and get as much enjoyment as possible. I mean, I am, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little uh, winded because, I would, like, yeah, I had sort of this idea of what was going to happen. And the trailers, I wasn't really a huge fan of the trailers. They didn't completely sell the movie for me, even though I knew I was going to like it. I knew it was going to be a blast from all the images and clips and all that stuff, and the music. Jesus, I'll talk about the music in a couple seconds. I knew I was going to love this, but the trailer, for some reason, was just... Eh. It needed, like, something. I don't know what it was, but I, I think it needed, like, an extra oomph. I don't know if you guys agree with me or not. Uh, but once the movie kicks in and you get all these fantastic set pieces, whether it be in in, in the jungle or in the uh, Arctic or the cityscapes or uh, uh, the island in the uh, Yucatan Peninsula and all that stuff, it's 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 lovely. I love it. Uh, Godzilla looked amazing. I love this design. He's chunky. He's He's tough, he's a tough son of a bitch, and he will kill uh, the toughest monster that comes uh, in, in his way. Ghidorah looked frightening and menacing and beautiful. Uh, uh, Rodan, my boy, the flying turkey bird, I would love him so much, and he was so angry in this. I, I, I wanted to see more. That was actually one of the only things I was a little bit bummed out by. I wanted to see more Rodan. But what we got was really cool. Of course, our queen, our, my favorite uh, female character of 2019 so far, Queen Mothra, in all her beautiful splendor, all her scenes were majestic and beautiful. And I love the touch of adding uh, bioluminescence to uh, the character. There were so many homages to uh, the Toho uh, Godzilla movies. Uh, yeah, it's Titan instead of Kaiju, but, you know, it's the same thing. I didn't mind whatsoever. I'd like seeing uh, that um, those other original designs and for all the other, spoilers, monsters that show up. But for the most part, it's self-contained to just uh, Ghidorah versus uh, Godzilla. Uh, Rodan and Mothra, you know, they help out their distinct uh, teams, if you will. What more can I say? If you like big monster movies and you want to have a fun time with great visuals, great effects, and just monsters and the awesomeness of Godzilla, one of my favorite movie monsters of all time, you're going to enjoy this. Even if the character development for the humans is terribly lacking, even if they say this, the dumbest things, you are still going to have a fun time. Just uh, this is uh, why we go to the movies to have fun, right? And I cannot recommend King of the Monsters enough. And actually, one of the things I wanted to really praise was um, Bear McCreary's uh, score for this movie, which is exceptional. It is superb and easily a nominated, an award nominated soundtrack, in my honest opinion. Go take a listen. You can listen to it for free, legally on uh, the Warner Brothers YouTube page, uh, their music page, every single track just oozes with personality, especially the themes for the three main monsters, uh, for the four main monsters, I should say, is just spectacular, from the drums to the choirs to all the instrumentality involved with uh, bringing 
of their personality in life through the music, even including the original Godzilla theme within this movie's main theme, was breathtaking. Um, last movie we didn't have that, but for me it was a really personal experience to be able to see that in a movie theater because I know Godzilla from TV. I sadly I don't know him uh, through the movie theater, and I know a lot of people my age my generation have that same experience so I will always cherish the uh, 2014 version because it introduced the character for me in a larger format. Yes, I have loved Godzilla growing up and I've watched many of his movies. I, I love the figures and all that stuff and, and the mythos and the whatever, the literature if you will. But this is the first time I get to see uh, two Godzilla movies if you will on the big screen and they were wonderful experiences. I still get a kick and and and, and just a feeling of nostalgia uh, rushes over when I whenever I see uh, this version of Godzilla just uh, being a badass and 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 being the the hero that we deserve. He is he is the best boy lizard boy we <laughs> we could ever hope for. And I am so ready for Godzilla vs. Kong. It's already starting the marketing campaign for this thing. It's coming out in uh, March of 2020, and I cannot uh, wait. I can't wait to see what they do with this, and hopefully uh, it doesn't end there, and the MonsterVerse can expand uh, to other areas, and we can feature more monsters and more stories. There, there was even a talk about um, doing like a primeval version of the characters uh, before humanity. Yes, please, do that. I, I, will, I will watch that a hundred times over. But yeah, Godzilla King of the Monsters. I, I normally do not uh, give scores or, or ratings or grades to movies. I just say whatever I feel. And in this case, this is uh, this was awesome. Despite uh, despite its small flaws, I wholeheartedly uh, recommend it. Have you seen Godzilla King of the Monsters? Let me know what was your favorite moment down below because I absolutely loved all the scenes involving Mothra and and Ghidorah uh, fighting. Uh, Godzilla and all that stuff. So yeah, let me know uh, down below what you thought of the movie. Guys, as always, thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing to A Week in Geekdom. None of this would be possible without all of you uh, fine people out there in the interwebs. Follow me on your favorite social media platform and do all that awesome stuff. I have got to go. I will catch all of you on our next episode. <laughs>